Hello everyone, I hope you're having a fantastic day so far. Today I wanna to talk about portfolio careers and why you need to consider one in your life. Now, you probably have one already, but I wanna really edify the key points and benefits for having a portfolio career. So what is one? Essentially, a portfolio career is one that you create as opposed to one being imposed on you, okay? So what do I mean by that? Rather than following a specific trajectory based on what you do, let's say, for example, as an architect or a doctor or lawyer, whatever it may be, you are creating, you are shaping, you are going into different places to create a lifestyle outcomes that you want from the things that you are doing. Whether this is volunteering, trustee work, non-executive director work, contracting, coaching, actual corporate roles of being an entrepreneur, all of these different things there. So it's really shaping your career the way you want to shape it. It could be very entrepreneurial. It could be non-entrepreneurial. It could be a bit of both. Okay. So the first thing is to say that portfolio careers are here to stay. They're not going anywhere. Okay. COVID pandemic really accelerated this idea of remote working. AI has definitely accelerated this idea of, okay, being on top of our toes, et cetera, et cetera. So the path is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. The other thing I want to say about this is that next thing is, you have to be able to develop a deep sense of purpose and explore your sense of identity. What do I mean by this? Think about the hallmark events that you've had in your life. Think about the experiences that you've had and you want to have. Think about the skills that you've developed. A lot of your confidence is based on competence. And so if you get into a position where you can demonstrate that competence, you're more likely going to create those opportunities. Really be clear about what your core values are, okay? So values being the things that are truly important to you as a person. And so you can start maneuvering in certain spaces and places that enables you to be in a certain portfolio career, okay? So that's the second thing. The third thing I want to say is dive deep into your interests, okay? Now, how do you do this? You have to have this level of curiosity, okay? And, you know, the guy in, I think the guy who wrote Mastery speaks about this, okay? Robert Greene. You have to have some sort of curiosity where you lean into spaces and topics and areas of expertise to help develop your practitionership. What do I mean by this? Learn from experts, whether that's getting a coach, mentor, going to seminars and classes, workshops, buying a course, checking things out on YouTube, whatever it may be, really sort of like digest the books. Use ChatGP to help you or Google Bard or Claude or wherever it may be. Use these things to help you gain real knowledge in this space. But more importantly, you have to utilize this knowledge in a certain way, but start to develop and build upon that knowledge. Because once you build upon that knowledge, that allows you to appease your curiosity, so to speak. And it puts you in a position where you're more likely going to make endeavors towards that field. And actually, as my missus once said to me, there's only so much you know until you have to actually do something. So the next thing is to sharpen your skills in that space. So enroll in a, in a accredited program. Okay, a lot of people act like, actually, there's no point doing anything accredited these days. You know, you just put yourself out there. It's all about the brand X, Y, and Z. I 100% agree with that. It is about the brand. It is about putting yourself out there. But imagine if you also had the vocational qualifications to match that stuff. You've got a different energy, boy. And so if you have that stuff and you are clear about what skills and competencies are required for you to be successful within a given space, then things are going to work out better for you because you have that framework, you have that level of expectation. Now, things won't always fall into that level of expectation, but at least you have a framework to work with. OK, so it's really important to join these different vocational programs, be part of associations, be part of different memberships. And again, it helps you really realize this sort of space. The next thing I want to say is start to share your knowledge. OK, really important stuff. So what I mean by that is share your knowledge on SEO platforms or social media platforms. What's an SEO platform? A search engine optimization platform such as YouTube. It requires you to search and you find something or a blog. It requires you to search and find something. OK, not many people use blogs these days, but who am I to judge? If blogs work for you, blogs work for you. It could be Medium, it could be Tumblr, it could be LinkedIn, it could be all this different stuff there. But again, it's more of a social media thing. The point I'm making is share your stuff. For me, I'm sharing my stuff through LinkedIn, through YouTube and through an email. If you're interested in really diving into my world and understanding more about strategic leadership and also performance, whether you're a contractor, consultant, whatever it may be, then feel free to opt into my newsletter as well. But anyway, the point I'm making is, is that you can use these things to share your knowledge. And why are you doing this? Well, as you're sharing and teaching others, OK, really, you're just sharing your knowledge and stuff. You're learning more. 
you're, you're consolidating that information in your mind. And so this is all important for portfolio careers because you want to be the expert. You know, you may be an expert in multifaceted things, but you start to dive into your niche. That's what your portfolio career is. That's why I said it's a mindset. You are creating that niche based on the blends that you are creating yourself as you live life. So the next thing is to make sure that you integrate your, your interests into social environments. What do I mean by that? Well, basically what I mean is start going to events, start talking to different people. Maybe you might start I don't know, coaching or mentoring people one-to-one. -one. Maybe you want to put your CV out there or whatever it may be because you started to acclimatize the stuff. If you can't get work straight away, paid work, what you want to do is free work, okay? This is how I started some of my coaching business. You know, when it comes to sort of like the other stuff that I did back in the day, before I got to a program management level within a contract, I practiced this stuff in junior roles. So I took on higher responsibility or I used certain templates or created certain templates and used it for my own stuff. I just made sure I practiced that work years before, months before, weeks before I got into the position that I'm in right now. So use opportunities to actually endorse, implement some of these skills and knowledge or whatever it may be. Really, really important stuff because when you do apply for different roles or contracts or opportunities, you can confidently say that you've done that. And this is why I said, Confidence stems from competence. It's as simple as that. So focus on that. The next thing is to play the game as a practitioner. Okay, so actively pursue your portfolio career. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Start to apply for things. I remember when I initially applied for the trustee position for the actual organization that I'm a trustee for at the moment. I was like, why not? Why me? And then I thought, why not me? Okay, so you have to start thinking like that. Why not you? Because it's going to be somebody else. Somebody else is going to take the opportunity. If you don't try, you don't know. So you have to be in a position where you actually start to try. The level on from that is to start to build an authentic personal brand. I love the word authenticity, but I feel like it's been abused because everyone's using it. And naturally, because I'm the sort of person that likes to go the opposite way, I don't use it as much. But authenticity is very important. And that comes down to inner work. You need to stop lying to yourself. You need to start living authentically, whatever that means to you. You need to stop self-alienating yourself and understand you have self-worth and value. And you need to make sure that you don't consistently lean into external influences, make decisions on your own accord. Understand what is important to you and express that online and offline be yourself don't be afraid if there's conflict it doesn't have to be a crazy situation it has to be something that reflects and resonates with you as a person follow that yellow brick road follow that path because trusting in that is what will open the opportunities but you have to try it following on from that there has to be a level of consistency what does consistency really mean it means doing something again and again and again but you do this intelligently where you get to a point where you understand how you can maneuver and move forward okay that's what lean methodology is or intelligent thinking is etc etc so make sure you start to engage with people through consistent messaging and all that messaging is, is really sharing your experiences, sharing your lessons, sharing your observances. That's all you're doing. You're just sharing this stuff. It's almost like a, a, an online journal, so to speak. This is what I've been doing essentially on LinkedIn or whatever it may be. It's not about views. It's not necessarily about engagement on the post, but it's the opportunity to create that brand awareness so that if people are interested in working with you directly or giving you an opportunity, then they can do that more confidently because you've got a stack of evidence from before that highlights that, yes, this person knows what they're talking about. This person has evidenced their experience, so to speak, and they can have a one-to-one -one conversation with you to show that. And the final thing I want to say is that you need to continually evaluate and refine your portfolio career to adapt to market conditions, but also your needs as well for your personal growth. Really, really important stuff because if you don't do this, then if you don't adapt, you die, as they say, okay? And here are some quick stats to really sort of like solidify what I've just said. Now, 63% of adults in, the, in England at the moment have multiple roles. They have multiple roles, whether they plan to have these roles or not. The next thing is 37% more people have a portfolio career than before the pandemic. So the pandemic did something. It made people think about different things. And this is why I'm saying the pandemic was a big deal when it came to all of this stuff. Now, the most common reason for why people choose a portfolio career is because they want more flexibility. They want more money. They want all of this kind of stuff there. I think there was a stat that said that people who are in these sorts of careers, I think, make on average about 70 odd K. Now, that's give or take. That varies, of course. And portfolio careers is a very broad space. But it's something for you to think about again. The other thing I want to say is that you're more likely going to be self-employed 
when it comes to portfolio careers. But if you're not, that's also okay. So there are people who are in traditional corporate roles, but they're doing things on the side, they're part of this board, whatever it may be. At least it starts to give you the confidence or the exposure to this sort of world if you're looking to get into this space. So you have to understand that this is continuing to grow as life goes on. So hopefully I've given you an idea of why portfolio careers are really important. If it's something you wanna explore potentially, then maybe we can have a conversation around this stuff. Again, contact me via LinkedIn. But if you want to see more things around portfolio careers and again, things around life management, et cetera, et cetera, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And as always, my friends, understand, reach and expand. Peace.